I would like to talk about the need for cardiac surgery for $800. The need and how it can be done. I'm a cardiac surgeon by profession, but I have a very interesting job. My job is putting price tag on human life. Now, you must be wondering what kind of job it is. Every day, I see about 60 to 80 patients in my clinic. Most of them are little kids sitting on the mother's lap. I examine the kid and I tell the mother that your baby has a hole in the heart. He needs an operation. She has only one question. You know what that question is? How much it is going to cost? I tell her it is going to cost 80,000 rupees, which she doesn't have. And that is a price tag on the kid's life. She comes up with 80,000 rupees, I can save the child. If she doesn't have 80,000 rupees, she's going to lose the kid. This is what we doctors do from morning till evening, putting price tag on human life. How long you will accept it to go on? Indians are genetically three times more vulnerable for heart attack. We develop heart attack at a younger age. The average age of my patients in England was 65. In India, it is 45. In my practice, it is not the young son bringing his old father for a heart operation. It is the old father bringing his young son for a bypass grafting. We need to do 2 million heart operations a year. Can anybody guess how many heart surgeries are done? It's only about 120,000 heart surgeries a year. What happens to the remaining 1.9 million people? They perish gradually over a period of time. In the process, we perhaps produce the largest number of young widows in the world. How long you will accept it to carry on? Why this mess? This mess is because our government spends about 1.1% of the GDP on healthcare, slightly more than sub-Saharan African countries. We thought we have to look at alternative way of funding healthcare. So around 10 years ago, we convinced our state government, government of Karnataka, to launch a health insurance called Yashasvini. We convinced 1.7 million farmers to contribute 5 rupees per month, 11 cents per month. And government agreed to become the reinsurer. In 10 years, over 4.5 lakh farmers had varieties of surgeries. And 60,000 farmers had a heart operation, all because of the power of 5 rupees per month. Now we are trying to convince our policymakers. We have 850 million mobile phone subscribers who are spending uh, 150 rupees per month just to speak on the mobile phone. So if we can collect 20 rupees from each mobile phone subscriber, we can cover the health care of 850 million people. This is the <laughs> poor people in isolation are very weak. But together, they are very, very strong. When this kind of a massive transformation happens, when everyone has a health care, you need to change the way the hospitals are built. So 12 years ago, we started a concept of health city in Bangalore. And this is the picture of our Bangalore health city. The plan was to have 5,000 beds in one campus with the infrastructure to uh, see about 10 to 12,000 outpatients per day. The first building is a heart hospital, which has the infrastructure to do 60 heart operations in a single day. But we have 100 towns in India with a population of half a million to one million. They can't afford to have this big health city. They need a small super specialty heart hospital. So we worked with LNT to build a 300 bed super specialty heart hospital and equip it build and equip for six million dollars. This is about 20 percent of what it costs otherwise. And we wanted LNT to build it in six months. And sure enough, they built the hospital.
this hospital has come up in Mysore. In this hospital, after the heart surgery is done, when the patient is in the ward, patient is not taken care by the nurses alone. Patient is cared by the spouse. Traditionally, spouse or the family member has no role to play in the patient care. A typical heart patient on the fifth day is ready to go home. Family was not involved with the care. On the fifth day, we call the wife, give her one plastic bag filled with medicines and tell her, ask her to take care of the husband. She is lost. She doesn't know what to do with him. Whereas if he is involved with the entire process of caring in the hospital. So we worked with the University of Stanford University and developed an audio video based curriculum to train the spouse to be the uh, caregiver so that there will be continuity of the care when the patient goes home. The economy of the uh, 21st century will be driven by health sector because health sector is one industry which can create millions of jobs. You look at IT industry which gets a lot of support from the government for one quarter of a million dollar turnover in IT industry they create about seven to ten jobs. In healthcare industry, to get a quarter of a million dollar turnover, we need to hire 250 people. And majority of the people in health sector are unskilled people. We hire a very small number of extremely skilled, semi-skilled people. If you want a stable society, if you want a better future, we need to create jobs for rural women. As an organization, we have over 13,000 employees across the country. And at one point of time, over 90% of our employees were women. Why women? If I have the job of cleaning the floor in the hospital, I can give the job to the man and give him 6,000 rupees salary. And he will spend 3,000 rupees on himself. And 3,000 rupees goes to the family's welfare. Instead, I give the job to his wife and give her 6,000 rupees salary. She will spend the entire 6,000 rupees on the family's welfare. A woman who comes from a low socioeconomic strata, once she is employed, she becomes an empowered woman. And these empowered women will discipline the children. And when these children, they grow up, they build a great nation. This is the power of job creation for the women. The next big thing in healthcare is going to happen in India. The next big thing in healthcare is not going to be a magic pill or a faster scanner or a new operation. It is going to be utilizing IT to make the hospital safer for the patients. Believe me, hospitals are not safe for the patients. Getting admitted to an American hospital, which is one of the safest, some of the safest hospitals on the earth, getting admitted to American hospital today is 10 times riskier than skydiving. <laughs> we need to make it safer. To make it safer, we have to use IT. So we are investing heavily on iPad-based solution, replacing the chart with the iPad, which will follow the patients. And we are investing heavily in developing simulators to train the critical care nurses to be better critical care nurses. If we can train a pilot to fly a F-16 fighter plane with the simulator, we can easily use the simulator to train the critical care nurses and this is what we are trying to do. To, for all this to happen, the cost has to come down. Cost of healthcare has to go down. If a solution is not affordable, it is not a solution. So we invested heavily on technology to get the information. We have advanced Oracle ERP solution on a cloud. We have hospitals in 22 locations. Every day, by 12 o'clock in the afternoon, all the doctors, all the senior administrators, get a SMS on their mobile phone with yesterday's revenue, yesterday's expense, and the EBITDA margin. For us, looking at the profit and loss account at the end of the month of a hospital is like reading a post-mortem report. Whereas having the profit and loss account on a daily basis is a diagnostic tool which will help you to reduce the cost. This is why our organization is profiled at the Harvard Business School as one of the case studies and occupied the front page of Wall Street Journal four years ago. We believe 
that India will become the first country in the world to dissociate healthcare from affluence. India will prove to the world that the wealth of the nation has nothing to do with the quality of healthcare its citizens can enjoy. Why we can do it when, uh, when other developed countries can, can do it, it's mainly because we produce the largest number of doctors, nurses, and medical technicians in the world. <clears throat> Outside the U.S., we have one of the largest number of U.S. FDA approved drug manufacturing units. We have everything going for a phenomenal healthcare delivery. But never give the credit to the policymakers who you think made it happen. Everything good in this country happens by default. And if there is one country which is directly managed by God, that is my country. Thank you very much.